Hey everybody, John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis. In today's lesson, I've got one tip, one single tip that is gonna help you with every stroke in the game. And by helping you, it's gonna help the stroke perform better and it's gonna help you look and feel and play like a high performance player. So like most tennis players, we're all looking to get better, but we're also looking for that magical component or element that makes it tennis look easier and makes us look like we play professional quality tennis. We want to get to that point where we look and feel and play like a professional player. And the one key thing that's missing in most players' recreational level is the coordination, the rhythm, the balance, the timing, the movement, all these things that tie together. And there's one key element on every stroke that really helps that happen. And that is the non-dominant arm. So in today's lesson, I'm going to show you some key things that you need to do with your non-dominant arm on all the basic strokes in tennis. And it's gonna tidy things up for you right away and help you perform much, much better strokes and shots. So everything begins with the proper ready position. And what I really encourage my students to do in ready position is have the non-dominant hand controlling the racket so that my playing hand and playing arm is just soft and relaxed. So if you can start that way, it's gonna really help you with everything you do. So in the ready position, you know, make sure you've got a nice athletic stance, let your non-dominant hand take control of the racket and hold the racket nice and steady, and then put your playing hand on. And for me, it just sits there in the forehand grip and it's just sitting there nice and soft. Now, I'm not a two-handed player, but if I were, I'd have both hands on the racket like this, but the right hand is just floating on the handle. But I'm actually a one-handed backhand player, and I have learned as a kid to have my left hand up on the throat. So now my left hand's up on the throat, and this is my ready position. And the left hand's dominating the control of the racket. So what happens is, is I'm ready to play, and I receive a ball to the forehand, naturally my left hand, because it's in control of the racket, is going to take me into the turn. So look what happened to my shoulders. I got my unit turned and got my shoulders turned without even thinking about it because my left hand is now back here and has taken the racket to the side. And if you look at virtually every player on the tour these days, every player, the left hand gets almost adjacent to the right shoulder before it releases to get that nice strong coil, okay? The left hand is in charge of that. If you're in ready position, your left hand's just floating around doing nothing, it'd be very easy to go, oh, forehand. And now you have a disconnect. You have a body that's disconnected from the swing. So the left hand is critical to entering into the forehand here. And then the next thing it really does, it helps line up the ball and balance you. So you really need to get that left hand away and get it out here and stretch it. Okay, it helps keep you in your turn and line the ball up. Even though it's not there very long, it is really helping you measure up the ball and get your contact point. And those are the two central key things that the left hand does on the forehand. There are other things it does too, but in this lesson today, I'm just gonna cover the one, two, okay? So if you wanna get your forehand performing better right away, get those two key pieces built into the forehand preparation, and you're gonna to start to play the forehand so much better. Next up, backhand. If I'm in my ready position, and my left hand's in charge, and I'm gonna go through the two-handed backhand first, the first thing I really need to do is I need to change my grip because you really don't want to be hitting your, your two-handed backhand, leaving your right hand in a forehand grip and bending your wrist. Why? Because there's really nothing you do in life that's comfortable like this, so why would you want to hit a backhand like this? So what ends up happening is, if you leave it there, then your hands are start to compete for comfort, and then you don't have control. The hands are, are competing with one another. But if the left hand's in charge and you let the right hand rotate back to a continental grip, now your two hands match and complement each other perfectly. So the hands are comfortable and natural, the racket face is vertical, and you can not have your hands competing with each other, okay? So the left hand is so important in the preparation stage of the two-handed backhand as well. And then, unlike all the other strokes, the left hand is in charge of the forward movement of the swing too. So your, your left hand for a right-hander should feel like it's the dominant force in the forward swing on the two-handed backhand. And those are the two key things for now that you want to focus on with your non-dominant hand on the two-handed backhand. When it comes to the one-handed backhand, which I am, the left hand's in charge here. And again, it's very important that it controls the racket so I can change my grip to an eastern backhand one-handed grip where my palm is now literally on the top. And this is where I, want, I need to be when I get my racket set. I've got to be in this eastern backhand grip. So the left hand is in control of the racket. It obviously helps me coil my shoulders back as well and sets the racket. And the next thing the left hand does here again is it times the swing actually. It actually times the release of the, of the swing forward to contact. 
So the left hand's holding, 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 releasing. And then what it does here, you can see it goes back. It actually counterbalances the forward swing by going back. And the ability of getting that left hand to go back allows the right hand to go forward more comfortably, more confidently as well. And then it holds the balance. So this hand is super busy on the forehands and the backhands, okay? Next up, slice backhands. So if I were a two-handed player, my left hand's in charge. Oh, I think I'm gonna play a slice. The left hand is gonna slide up the handle, allow the right hand to move to a continental grip. And again, it's gonna hold the racket and time the forward swing. It's gonna hold, hold, hold. But when it releases, that's when the right shoulder is gonna take over and the left hand's gonna go back and counterbalance again. So again, very, very involved. It's a non-dominant hand. Oftentimes we see club level players that are playing backhands and the left hand you know, is down by the side and they're just fighting balls off and they're not getting any shoulder turn. And almost in all cases, that player is playing with an armband on their forearm because they've got tennis elbow arm problems. And those arm problems really originate from not getting the body properly involved in the swing. And the left hand is a key part of that, okay? So on the ground strokes, I would start with having the left hand in charge right away and let it dictate and maneuver you into the preparation stages for all of the strokes and then have, help you with the timing as well. When it comes to the volley, the non-dominant hand is equally involved, okay? When I come to the net, my left hand is gonna help me change my grip to a continental grip because everything I'm gonna do in the front court is gonna be played with the continental grip. So I've got this continental grip change here and the ball comes to my forehand you know, I've got kind of a neutral floating wrist, just a relaxed wrist here. But when the ball comes to my forehand, I can't leave my wrist in that position. I've got to set the wrist. So my left hand presses the racket to set the wrist. And now I've got a set wrist to go play the forehand volley. So my first move on the forehand volley is with my left hand. Set and release. Okay. Set and release. And then my left hand, and you see this a lot. You see, Players just don't know what to do with the left hand. You see it in here, you see it down here, you see all these things. The left hand is gonna help counterbalance you. It's gonna come away and it's almost gonna match the position of my right hand on the left hand side. Once it sets, it separates away and holds the balance so I can play the volley and it's firm, okay? So interestingly enough, the left hand has a very central role in playing the forehand volley. So you've really gotta get it in there and the only way you can do it is again, in ready position when you're coming forward is to get the left hand in charge and then, oh forehand volley set the wrist separate away and now you're set just to play the volley while this one's holding the balance really really important on the backhand volley the left hand has a little bit more of a clear roll again i'm in ready position here comes the ball the left hand is going to maneuver the racket it's going to maneuver the racket to get in front of the path of the ball while the right hand just follows along and it's just waiting to make its move and the reason why this is so important is because we cannot contract our muscles in two different directions at the same time. So if we're using this muscle to find the ball, then there's nothing left to play the forward movement. And that's why you see club level players that, again, don't use the left hand on the volley. They're just kind of swatting at it. They don't have any power or control or feel of what they're doing. Nothing's coming from here. So what I feel and what I want you to feel is the left hand is setting the racket and this is on reserve. It's just waiting. And then as I get close to playing contact and the ball's coming, I feel a little tension between the hands and then the left hand says release and I just go forward, okay? And look how the left hand goes back again. It counterbalances the forward movement like that. And the power and control of the forward movement is in the shoulder and it's still in the shoulder, okay? So a little off track on the left hand here, but when you get here, just don't release. Hold, hold firm here and hold it and counterbalance. And this counterbalancing here will help make this one a little bit more comfortable to do as well. If the left hand floats away, this one's gonna to wanna to float away. So the left hand has got a big, big roll on your backhand volley, setting the racket, timing the release and counterbalancing. Very, very important. And finally, the role of the left hand on the serve. And of course, this seems to be a little bit more obvious because the left hand has to do things on the serve. But let's go through a couple of things that are really important that the left hand does that may be a little bit new to you and how it actually helps facilitate the serve. So for me, once again, when I'm in ready position for the serve, I like to let the non-dominant hand take control of the racket and the ball. And I generally set my feet up so that I'm sideways to my target. And then my racket naturally wants to point out in the direction, the general direction of my, of my shot's gonna be in my target. And that allows me to put my hand right on top in the continental grip. So I'm very comfortable here. 
And unlike, and just like my ready positions on the other strokes, I let the left hand be in control of the racket head so that the right hand doesn't have to do any work. So when I'm getting set up to serve, the degree of tension or lack of tension is established here and it's retained throughout the serve. And again, this is a big distinguishing factor because we see club players where the hands are apart and this looks tight and this is tight and the armband's on and everything's all locked up. If you just simply start this way and just put your hand on nice and soft and relaxed, that's gonna set up your swing to be a lot more comfortable and it's gonna allow more fluidity with less effort. So the left hand's already doing a key thing on the serve and you haven't even started yet. And of course it, it does a routine for most players and that's a separate subject which we can get into a little bit later on. But I let the racket sit in the hand again and then when I start, my hands float back and then the left hand comes away. And then the tension here is just retained, the lack of tension, the floatiness, softness in the hand. And then the left hand, of course, we know has to place the ball. But a lot of club players will toss the ball up and the left arm will sort of fall down or not rise. But we want that left hand to rise up. And that allows you to get into a good trophy position with a nice angle, okay? It would be very unnatural to go like this and raise the arm. I couldn't even raise the arm, let me do it again. To go like this, I wouldn't do that. So instinctively, knowing there's a ball up there and the arm is going to continue to rise, I'm going to look up there, okay? And it's going to get me into a, a good angle. And then the next thing the left hand is going to help me do is really recognize whether the ball's playable or not. Because that's the only thing that's up here in the blue, big blue sky that I can refer to to say yes or no. Is it playable or is it not? So the left hand can help be a useful guideline for accuracy of the ball toss. So when that ball began to descend, I could see it was directly above my hand and I could measurably decide that that ball was playable. So the left hand is very involved there, okay? Now the next piece that the left hand does is a bit of a controversial topic because we often hear coaches say, keep the arm up, keep the arm up, keep the arm up, but you can't. You have to get the arm up to coil and load into your position, but then the left hand plays a key role in unraveling that coil. So the left hand is actually gonna move away and dictate the rotation to bring the swing to the ball. So the left hand is actually the leader in the serve. It's, it's leading the start and it's showing you that you play the ball and then it's moving away to lead you into contact. And those are the couple of the key things the left hand does there on the serve as well. There are more things, but in this lesson, if you can just begin to master those stages with the left hand and those uses of the left hand on the serve, it's gonna make a, a big, big difference for you. So it should be pretty clear now that the non-dominant hand plays a central role in virtually everything you do on the court in terms of coordinating, generating power, timing, all these different things. It plays an essential role on every single stroke. So I strongly encourage you to get out there and practice. And you don't even have to be on a tennis court. You can practice at home. Just practice the skill of starting out with the ready position with the left hand in control if you're right-handed. Get this left hand in control. Start to build muscle memory where the left hand is helping you enter into every stroke and then timing your movements and coordinating everything. That's how you're gonna generate power easier with less effort, avoid the injury plague that's common among recreational tennis players, and just simply improve your overall performance. And then finally, when you start to coordinate everything and you get into fluidity and so forth, you're gonna to start to look and feel and play like the high performance player that you'd like to be. So this is the key element. Now, if you'd like to know more and you'd like to dig in deeper, just click the link in the description down below to get my library of lessons where I cover the key elements of every stroke that you need to master to really become the best player that you can possibly be. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson. Give us a like, leave your comments down below. I always respond to the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already because we have a lot more coming here at Performance Plus Tennis. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next lesson.